the more color you get and the more flavor. So if you want to know how you get beers with different intensities of flavor and different amounts of color, what you have is the main malt. It's a pale malt, which is a, basically a source of starch and enzymes and a little bit of flavor. Okay? But if you want to put more flavor and more color in, you would add some of the specialty malts that have been heated to a greater extent. And the more you heat, you, what you're doing is reacting the amino acids and the sugars together to get more color, more flavor. And so you might put in some crystal malt together, you know, a beer with more depth and so on, right the way through to roast barley, which is what you would use to make Guinness. Now, some of you may be great Guinness aficionados. If those of you who don't know about Guinness, and you want to recreate, mimic the uh, way of doing it and the flavor, then get 20 cigarettes, smoke them, stub them out in an ashtray, and lick the ashtray. Right? <laughs> 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 but it is a visual experience. It's a visual experience. Um, you know, there are more myths about Guinness than any other beer I know. A woman emailed me. She said, is it true? The difference between Guinness brewed in Ireland and Guinness brewed elsewhere in the world is they marinate a dead cow in the beer. <laughs> so I emailed her and I said, Madam, I've been in the brewery for 33 years and never heard anything quite so stupid. <laughs> Everybody knows it's a sheep. <laughs> so she emailed me back and said, well, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> so there are all these myths about Guinness. Uh, that are not true. So you see all sorts of different colors. And you can have very pale colors. For example, Bud, Bud Light, did you know those are the single biggest use for rice in the United States of America is to make Bud and Bud Light? And 70% malt, 30% rice. And it's not because it's cheaper. It's actually more complicated to use the rice. And for the scientists amongst you, that's because the gelatinization temperature of the starch is much higher than it is for barley. So there's an extra processing is involved. Uh, and a lot of attention to detail goes into selecting that rice. The reason they use it is to get a very pale color and a very light flavor. Now, many people are rude about uh, North American lager style beers, and they'd be wrong to be rude. Um, and I, this is the one thing I get sensitive about, when the craft guys attack the big guys. Not that I would name any names, but there's an arrogant bastard in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> about yellow fizzy liquid. <laughs> and that's that who's the who nobody wins from that, you know, because what you say at a stroke is that millions of people in the United States of America don't know what they're talking about. If suddenly that becomes bad beer. It's not bad beer, actually it's the hardest beer in the world to make because it has the least flavour. <laughs> and if you make any mistakes you will see it there. You know, Michelob Ultra is very unforgiving. <laughs> now on campus I have a brewery and I tell the students this and they, they have a brewing competition every year and what they brew, they all brew Guinness meets Hefeweizen yeah. because they say, well, you know, if I make a mistake, you'll never notice. Whereas if I really skill, then, you know, it, I probably would. But anyway, um, so, you know, it's, it'd be wrong to, to, to uh, rubbish those products. Miller, a number of years ago, came out with a clear beer. This was a triumph of technological ability over common sense. <laughs> <laughs> and what they did was make a beer and they stripped all the cover out. And they called it Miller Clear Beer. And so you took this and you poured it into a glass and you got a what, water white with some bubbles, like a scum on the top. <laughs> And it tasted vaguely beer you know? It lasted two weeks before they pulled it off the shelf. This is not a good idea. Of course, barley is not the only cereal used for brewing. A lot of interest these days in sorghum, uh, particularly for people who've got celiac disease. Of course, people with celiac disease are sensitive to the protein, the gluten for wheat, the equivalent, uh, the uh, prolamine from barley. We've done a lot of work on this recently. We've been using a test to screen for these sensitive peptide sequences in beer. And let me tell you, there's a bunch of mainstream beers that actually don't have very much of this stuff in at all. In fact, because they don't have a whole bunch of anything in there <laughs> at all. Um, but seriously, they're very low levels. Now, this is a very delicate topic. And I'm not going to advocate, if you've got serious, you say, drink this beer, because you'll be OK, because I'm not a doctor. All I'm saying is that, together with the use of a new enzyme that is available to break these sensitive proteins down, 
uh, that it is possible, in my opinion, to think about making beers with uh, celiac sufferers from regular brewing ingredients. But of course, the way the legislation is, you couldn't do it. You'd have to declare that it contains barley or wheat. Um, so, um, sorghum is of interest. Wheat, of course, uh, many of you are familiar with wheat-based beers. And of course, the ultimate breakfast beer is Hefeweizen. <laughs> and this is the beautiful thing about, about beer. You know, it's a beer for every occasion and for every time of day. It's not like wine. I mean, you can't come off the squash court and say, oh, I just could murder a Pinot Noir. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. You can't go fishing in the Mouton Rothschild Chateau. <laughs> so, so breakfast beer, of course, is Hefeweizen. Now, as you probably know, there are three indicators of an authentic Hefeweizen. And if you want uh, two good examples in California, there would be uh, Darren Gordon, Gordon Beersh's Hefeweizen, which is a really very good one. That beer he always brings up to me when he, he comes, <laughs> and uh, Keller Weiss from Sierra Nevada. And let me just take this opportunity to say that the most beautiful brewery anywhere in the world is the Sierra Nevada Brewery in Chico. And if you haven't been there, I strongly recommend you go there. There's no finer brewery and no more impressive guy in the brewing industry than Ken Grossman. <laughs>